Quarterbacks make everything bigger, don't they? It's just the, the position, the, the energy, the excitement around a player like Drew Aller makes everything supersized. So that's what we've got today on T. Frank's Film Room, an extended version, getting into some really specific stuff. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. If you haven't watched T. Frank's Film Room before and this is your first time, welcome. Uh, we have some snacks. They're all gluten-free, don't worry. Uh, and we're going to be getting into Drew Aller, five-star quarterback out of Medina, Ohio. What this isn't, if you haven't watched before, is this is not a highlight video. This is not me just sitting here telling you how awesome Drew Aller is because he's a five-star. Every single service, every recruiting ranking on three's consensus has him as a four-star, 37th overall player in the nation. So he's, he's really good. Everyone knows that. We're getting into some of the details and the nitty-gritty stuff, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on the journey of me watching Drew Aller and some of the things I picked up early on last year and his development in some key areas that I think change how you should view him specifically and give you the nature of what he is as far as what I see on film. So if you like T. Frank's Film Room and you enjoy this, make sure you subscribe to our Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel and you like the video. It, it helps me. It, my reward process makes me feel good. And YouTube also likes it when you like videos. So appreciate if you do that. But I got to earn that like first. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Drew Aller, the five-star quarterback out of Medina, Ohio. Again, the number one overall player in the class of 2022 at his position, according to On3. The 11th overall player in the nation to On3. A, a five-star should be a consensus five-star. Isn't quite yet. So in 2022, when he first picked up his Penn State football commit and, and committed the Nittany Lions, did a, a film study on him and started watching his film. So that's where we're going to start because to me, there was one thing that was really important that I see progress over time, and that was his footwork. Footwork is so important to the quarterback position that that's where we have to start. Now, when it comes to this movement here, the front foot on every quarterback – to me, if, if you want to know if your quarterback is accurate or not, if he's a good mechanical, uh, technical quarterback, watch his front foot. And for Drew Aller, to me, this is the million-dollar movement. If he can master this particular thing, then he is everything that he needs to be. He's going to be first-round draft pick, all the hype, what everyone believes about him. So if you aren't familiar with it, quarterback mechanics, you need to have your front foot pointed towards your target when you throw the football consistently. That's consistent mechanics. Now, it sounds simple, but just think about where all the receivers are on in the football field, the ability to throw with anticipation to get the ball to meet the receiver, and the ability to do it consistently under pressure, like in this situation where he's got a free blitzer coming off the edge. That is not easy. And that is the part where he struggled in 2020. Now, if you look at this, I, I kind of highlighted his front foot here. It's almost parallel with the hash mark. That means his hips are closed off and all the power he can generate with that six foot five frame is muted. It also means that he's throwing mostly with his arm. And if you are throwing just with the upper body mechanics, there's a lot made about that right now. Throwing off platform, doing drills to make you throw on the run, movement in the pocket, all that stuff. And that's all important, and we'll actually get to that later. But if you can't consistently and, and repeatedly do this motion, you can't operate from the pocket within the confines within a rhythm structure. And that's what happens on this play is there's pressure. He can't fully get through his, his throw so he doesn't get all of his uh, follow through. And he's, his foot is basically pointing towards the sideline. So that means this ball is not a terrible ball, but it's behind and high, which means if there's a safety in the middle of the field here, that's an interception. As it is, it's a ball that's thrown high. You leave your receiver out to dry, and it's an incompletion. So the issue is not always with Aller that he doesn't get his uh, foot there eventually. It's, it's when it happens. If you want to go watch how this is supposed to be done properly, and this is kind of just the, the basics of the position, go watch Drew Brees highlights. Some of the best footwork you'll see uh, is Drew Brees manipulating the pocket and throwing with, his, with, with accuracy. When his back foot hits the ground, his front foot is already pointed forward, and then he just has to turn his body towards the receiver he wants to throw. Drew Aller opens his hips really late, especially in 2020. And what that means is here, again, a free rusher and another guy coming off the side, 
Uh, so he doesn't have the time to fully open his hips and, and drive because that is late in his process. This is, a, if you ever watched the NFL draft, last year specifically, this reminds me a lot of Trey Lance, where he would stomp his foot in the ground and then twist forward and create some incredible torque on the ball, but also some incredibly erratic passes. And it's not to that level with Drew Aller in 2020, but that is in the ballpark of what we're talking about. So in this play, he can't follow through. He doesn't really get his foot all the way through before he has to throw the football. And again, the ball is behind, it's high, and you get an interception on this play. That is fundamentals 101. That's just basic quarterback mechanics, and it was an area where he needed to improve because this was uh, one of my biggest critiques of him is his, his, the ball came out very high and uh, behind a lot in 2020. So that's 2020. Let's get into his footwork and see the growth over time from Drew Aller in 2021. We're looking at one game early in the season and one game late in the season. These clips, by the way, from our intrepid recruiting insider, Ryan Snyder, who went out to Medina, Ohio, to see Drew Aller. Okay, so right here, what we just talked about. You set up, you're ready to throw, and your foot is pointed towards your coaches. Um, directly parallel on this hash mark. This is a work in progress. Remember, this is a young quarterback early in the season of his senior year trying to implement these things. Um, it's important to also remember that even if it's it's late that he gets there, it's the, it's the ability to throw with anticipation and into windows that make you a great quarterback. And I'll show you what I mean when it comes to this particular defense. It's important to know about Drew Aller, too, is the Medina offense is five wide, I'd say 65 to 70% of the time. He is the offense. He's operating, especially between the 20s. He is five wide, reading the defense, making plays every single time, putting high school offenses in conflict with coverage. And because of that, last season, teams were blitzing him a lot. And they were they were bringing three down linemen and either a fourth rusher off the edge or bringing five. Now he sees eight in coverage consistently. And that means you get some more complex coverages. You get some more things that you got to digest. So this is a red zone cover two with a free safety in the middle who is basically a free player. He's not rushing the quarterback. He's reading. He doesn't have a zone specifically. He's reading the quarterback, reading what's going on in the offense and trying to take away the primary read, which in this case, as I've kind of given you the rough uh, diagram here, it's cover two man. So the guy in the middle is the free player, hole dropper, whatever you want to call him. He is going to be reading the coverage and taking away this post route to the middle of the football field. So let's now look at this and see how it marries up with his uh, with uh, with Aller's footwork. And what I'm highlighting here is number one beats his guy off the off the line of scrimmage. But you see the way that the the safety he's in he knows what coverage he's in. He knows where the weakness is. So you see the 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 free player he's eyeing up the post. And whether Aller means to or not, he is getting that uh, deep safety in cover two on the boundary to bite on that inside move, freeing up the guy going up the sideline, which you'll see here in one second. The problem is, if you look at his footwork, Aller's not ready to throw this football. So if he is ready to throw this football, that's the read you want. That safety breaks in, he abandons his deep coverage in cover two, and you can get the guy who won up the sideline on a touchdown, on a uh, on a go route or a red zone fade, whatever you want to call it. But in this situation, he's not ready to throw. He resets his foot. He gets back in the pocket, drifts a little bit. I'm not in love with throwing off the back foot here, but you got pressure. Again, you can't always throw in rhythm. Gets that front foot ready to go now, but because he can't get into this throw, he doesn't deliver it high enough for the receiver to come back to on a comeback route. Now, that's not a terrible decision, throwing into garbage in the red zone. He throws it low and away. It's not bad. The The receiver should absolutely catch that for a touchdown. And, you know, in college, that will likely be caught. But in that situation, the primary read, either he didn't see or he didn't want or he wasn't ready to throw. So here's another situation, again, of I wanted to put this one out here because I think this is good to show his pre-snap recognition as well, where he's moving and motioning the offense. There's a lot of college level stuff here where he's moving guys around checking with the sideline diagnosing coverage with motion just like in Mike Yurcich's offense so you see what he's reading here is he's reading these two uh defenders at the top of the screen is this cover one is this cover three 
What are you looking for? Or is this off man coverage with different level concepts? But he knows based on the movement that it's man coverage, he's able to immediately in rhythm. You see free rusher coming off the edge again in 2020, he would not be ready to throw this football, but because the way he's worked on his, his mechanics and his ability to throw within rhythm, this is a college level throw. If somebody gives you cover three, you hit the soft comeback route on the outside because it's it's hard to cover that. And he throws in rhythm, strong velocity, gets the ball there, and it's a great play by the quarterback. He beats them with his mind, with pre-snap motion, and then with great fundamentals at the position. Just delivers, loads up, and you see the arm strength there to deliver the strike. In this situation, this to me is, is what you're looking for. This is almost perfect. So front foot already ready to go. Back foot hits the ground. Front foot is already pointed in the direction it needs to be. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to hit this guy, this receiver in man coverage in the window after he clears the linebacker. So he's got to be ready to go immediately to throw this ball. If it's, if the linebacker either is in man coverage or if he comes in rushes, then he's got the first window. What he does here is he's waiting for the second window. So he's in position. He's ready to go. And then look at that momentum coming forward. His whole body is into the throw. His, uh, his front foot is accept accepting the weight coming from his back foot. And, uh, maybe it's, a, it's into a too tight of a window. The decision, I think you can, you can argue about here with basically double coverage, but the technicality of this throw is the reason it wasn't intercepted because he gets it exactly where he wants to in the second window. It's just a guy. It's just a situation where the throw and the receiver didn't quite meet up, but that's the fundamentals of what you're looking for. And that's the progress he's made over time to be able to do that motion consistently. Now, here's the important thing to know. It's never 100% one thing always. So if you have poor footwork, you can still throw balls on target. If you have great footwork, you can still totally miss. But it's about the number and the average of what you're able to do. And that has increased over time. And to me, that's the only thing from, from that that, I was, that his profile was missing as a quarterback. Let's get into some of the other stuff that I think is really important when it comes to the quarterback and what Drew Allard does, and that would be his pre-snap recognition and his work to understand what the defense is trying to do to him before the snap. And this is something that if you want, because Penn State fans want to know if he can start right away, these are the things you need to be looking for. So, okay, uh, what you didn't see is there's a pre-snap clap, get the defense to set, get them on alert, checks the sideline, he has his new play, and he's ready to go. And again, what we talked about earlier is Aller typically sees eight in coverage as a senior. So he's got to be reading these plays beforehand. And like last time, there are three deep safeties. And like last time, again, it's not cover three or cloud three or any of those variants of a three deep look. This is actually, because we'll run this here, you have five underneath defenders. That means it's not cover three, it's not cover one. It's most likely cover two. So you've got the corners pressed up on the line of scrimmage, and you've got the, the hook curl defenders, and then your hole dropper in the middle. So you know this is going to be most likely cover two if you're Drew Aller, which means you know the route combination you need to go to. And he's working on this corner on the bottom of your screen with this route combination. There's kind of a slow go route and a stop route here. What he's reading is what that cornerback does. He has to confirm that it is, in fact, cover two, before and then because they're trying to disguise this as cover one with maybe a robber or something and then he reads that and he knows where to go with the football bam that is all because he knew what he's looking at pre-snap he wasn't reading the defense as it's going he is confirming what he read before because what happens is that corner you see him bite up on number four that means he's in cover two and he vacated his zone responsibility. There's no one over there because the safety can't get there in time. Those yards are brought to you by pre-snap recognition. That's what you need to have as a quarterback. And it's an area that, as I watched his senior film, this got better. So again, an area he's been working on that. So I'm coming around on the idea that he could play his senior, his freshman season at Penn State. Do I think he should start from day one? I don't think so. But just that's because... Football's hard, not because he's lacking anything. 
Every coach is going to try and not start a true freshman if they can. Okay, so what I think he does better than anything else is his pocket movement and his pocket mobility. This is an area where I know this is why people want to compare him to Josh Allen. Josh Allen didn't have any of these skills until he was in the NFL. Uh, so some of those comparisons of being 6'5 and great with mobility, they're not quite exactly fair to give to Drew Aller or to Josh Allen because Aller's doing some of these things as a senior in high school. Again, so you're never going to be able to throw 100% of the time in rhythm with great footwork. And as we saw here, pressure, he moves up through the pocket with his eyes down the field. He's targeting a receiver that's sitting on the hash. And when you throw the ball in this position, if you can't step into your throw, what you want is you have you want to have your shoulders and your your feet square to where you're throwing either with a line of scrimmage or the receiver downfield. And you can see perfect He's set up perfectly. He's going to throw this with a flick of the wrist. That arm talent comes through, leading the guy up the seam, the receiver up the seam, and for a touchdown. That is accuracy and mobility on the move, and it's the stuff that makes you a great quarterback is your play within the pocket. That is some really high-level stuff, and it's consistent because, again, watch this here. Not in love with him abandoning what was a relatively clean pocket, but you see, eyes downfield, he feels the rush coming at him. He's still reading the coverage, makes a great move, gets to the sideline, and, again, it's not perfect, but he's getting himself in a good throwing position before he throws the football, and then he's loading up and throwing down the sideline too accurately to his receiver to get yards. That is out of structure. That is great, and it's consistent. His ability to play from a rolling pocket is also pretty good with the ability to roll to his his right here. I'm not super in love with the decision, and you can see pressure there, but he gets the ball on target while in motion, and we'll get to more of that in just a little bit. But that's just some of the, the next-level things that you get from Drew Aller of being able to step through, get his eyes downfield, and again, squared up, his front foot is pointed down the field. And this is, if you watch the game against Rutgers with Christian Veyu, this is the same exact pass. This is the same exact down to, I don't know why you're jumping here, but uh, throw it up and let your guy have a chance. He throws a little inside. I think he'd want to throw it on the outside of this receiver, but still puts it on the frame, lets his guy make a play. That's the special sort of stuff with, with a guy like Drew Aller that you're going to get. Okay, so let's talk about arm talent. And before that, here is all of that all at once for a beautiful touchdown. The ability to extend the play, keep your hips the right way, and throw a strike for a touchdown. So let's talk about arm talent because I think he's got a good arm and this is a great place to start as he gets more physically mature, but I think the arm talent part is a little bit overstated and we'll show you what I mean here. So this throw is perfect. That is everything you want it to be. That is, uh, I'm just going to roll this again. This ability to throw this pass in rhythm, a go ball on the sideline in perfect rhythm. He throws a very catchable deep ball. How it came down perfectly in the basket and all of those things that you want to see. Okay, so here's another thing. Look at his throwing position here. There's a little bit of pressure, but he does have the platform to stand up uh, and, and step up in the pocket and throw the ball. He throws off his back foot. Again, great trajectory on the ball, great power, but watch the receiver has to slow down and the corner comes back into play making the tackle. That's fine. It's a great play. He gets the he gets the yards. Maybe he misses some of it, but same play, throwing off his back foot, leading the receiver down the field. The receiver has to come back for the ball and it's batted away. So it is, and no quarterback has just insanely good arm strength to throw from any platform to any part of the field. This isn't Madden. So every player has weaknesses like that. But then again, watch this throw. On target as a receiver, this is the thing. Again, he's throwing this one off his back foot and we are absolutely nitpicking here. But watch, he throws this off his back foot does not step forward, steps to the side. He throws the ball downfield. The receiver, you see, is catching it towards the numbers. A route like this needs to be out towards the sideline because that safety, if it's uh, in college, that's a 4-3 that's a speed safety coming over to take the head off of his receiver. He's going to get somebody hurt doing it this way. In college, this is a great, or in high school, this is a great throw. He puts the ball where the receiver should catch it. The receiver isn't able to make the play. 
but it's an on-target throw. It's just going forward, are you going to get away with that? I'm not necessarily certain. And then this one, again, off his back foot, doesn't step into the throw, goes upward vertically. That's where his momentum is going. But look at the parabolic motion that his, uh, his deep balls have. This, I think, is something that's special for Drew Aller, is his ability to get the ball up and down and to make a difference for the catchability to the receiver. And again, terrible <laughs> mechanics in my opinion, but what do I know? He throws the ball down the field, and it's exactly on target to a guy streaking down the field who bobbles it and drops it. High school, but that's a touchdown in college. So then the last thing is to show you some of these on-the-move on the throws in the back of the end zone, pinpoint target, his ability to throw on the run is borderline special. He's got some really great abilities. Throw with anticipation into zones. I love all of that stuff. And there's a certain creativity about it too, which I just can't describe this particular play. I mean, what is that? What is that? So then finally, the last thing is, okay, so we saw some pre-snap diagnosing. We saw some of the footwork things that he's gotten to work on over time. Does he do it consistently? Well, that would be in rhythm throws in the offense. And when he does it right, this is the best stuff you're going to see. And I know that it's, it's just 10-yard throws, 15-yard throws. Again, beautiful throw down the sideline for a touchdown. But stuff like this, into that window with anticipation, timing, his footwork is great, catch, throw, beats cover two. It's just it's what you're looking for. This is exactly what you're looking for. And that consistency is what he was missing as a junior that he found this year. And he's able to replicate and duplicate that throw time and time again. And that is why he is a five-star quarterback. And that's why I think after not believing it originally, the hype is real. Drew Aller is going to be that good if he continues to work on that footwork and get consistent placement on the ball. Because it was not in 2020, and it absolutely is now. So Drew Aller, can he start in 2021? I don't... I still want to say no, but the longer I watched this film and the more I saw some of the, the decisions he was making, maybe not necessarily the throws that came out with some, some throws down the field that were a little low, a little behind, I still liked the decisions he was making. One thing I didn't even get to show you is he, 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 he has back shoulder game. When's the last time you saw a Penn State quarterback throw back shoulder and hit it? So there's a lot to be excited with Drew Aller, and I think that maybe in the middle of the season, Maybe in the middle of the season, he'd be ready to see some time on the football field. I, I'm doing the thing that I didn't want to do, which is I don't ever want to overhype a player because they get enough hype. But with Drew Aller, it's, it's warranted. It's absolutely warranted. It's not just the physical skills. It's his ability to play the position from a physical and mental aspect. So that is Drew Aller. If you like the video, give it a like on T. Frank's Film Room. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We will be back with more Penn State uh, prospects here in T. Frank's Film Room.